Paolo, how are you? Hey man, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Oh, Thank you. that's great. Um, uh, so yeah, doing good. Fantastic. Always great to, to hear there's a new trivia album out. We actually got to listen to it last night, so uh, it's it's very fresh to us. You say last week? Last night. Man, really fresh. <laughs> <laughs> So we've, we've played it through a few times. Sounds fantastic. Bit of a different sound to Thank the. Thank you very much. Bit of a different sound to Vengeance Falls, the last album. Uh, what what, yeah. were, what were you going for sound wise this time? Um, I mean, the two words that kind of sum it up would be classic and modern. You know, yeah. kind of finding the right balance between the two things. Um, I mean, we definitely used a lot of classic records to kind of give us a, sort of an inspiration to you know, write more anthemic, bigger metal, metal songs. Um, mm. Definitely a lot more focused on melody in terms of the singing, in terms of the music. Um, so, I mean, we, once we kind of realized the record was going to go more that way with the vocals, you sort of write towards them and you have to write riffs and chord progressions that fit that. And so, you know, we kind of challenged ourselves if we could live up to it, if we could make a record like that and so that was kind of the goal and you know we worked with a new producer this time worked with Elvis Basquette who's out of Orlando um really really great with uh songwriting ideas and so it was just kind of once we had the vision we knew who what kind of producer we wanted to pair up with uh we worked with Josh Wilber who makes this record and first time working with him he's done so many great records as a producer and a mixer mm. so we were stoked you know we got to work with a couple new people and uh just really dive into this challenge you know we, we spent a lot of time writing it and also getting ready for it pre-production and then recording it so it's quite it's quite an interesting process then so it sounds like you you you, you set upon the sound to start off with uh, then you found a producer who was going to give you that sound uh, and then you actually get down to, to writing the songs? Is that how it happens? or? Yeah, I mean, that's how... I mean, that's what we do now. Um, we kind of learned over time, the more... Uh, the more clear your idea is for the record, the more prepared you are, the better. Um, you know, we definitely, in the past, we've done stuff where... I feel like, in ways, we sort of... We ended up having a lot more time to write, and... Mm -hmm. So we just sort of kind of just wrote a ton of different stuff. And, you know, you get, I think that record kind of reflects that. There's a lot. There's, a, there's full screaming songs. There's, you know, kind of the classic scream, sing thing. And then we had songs that were just singing. And this record, we wanted to just be more focused. And we were like, we want to make this kind of record that focuses purely on this. And so that kind of dictated all the, the plans we made for this one. Yeah, I mean Matt, Matt's vocals sound particularly strong on this one. I mean that's that's something that really comes through. Yeah, he he really, really, really worked hard for it. You know, last year uh, we had to cancel a few dates because Matt, like, just you know, we kind of came to the point we were touring really, really hard, and he, you know, luckily it wasn't like a serious issue, but it was just kind of like fatigue. But um. After we canceled those dates, um, Matt from Avenge, Avenge Sevenfold hit, hit him up and put him in touch with his vocal coach. Okay. And he sort of started to relearn techniques to kind of preserve his voice, to strengthen it, to learn how to reach some newer notes that he didn't know he could do with the proper techniques, as well as the new screaming technique. And so, you know, he really spent months and months while we were touring, but then when we got off tour, you know, up until it was time for him to record, just taking lessons, um, practicing, and I think it kind of shows in the record. It's very, very strong. And to me, like, I, I'm i always around Matt's voice, so, like, mm. it always sounds like Matt to me, but mm. I think when we come back each time, when it's been a bit of time, and in between each record, there's always that growth because there's been two years. Mm. So... It's different. When I hear it, I hear Matt's voice, and I know that it's stronger, but for someone to go from, like, In Waves and Vengeance Falls, even, or if you go the whole way back to Ascendancy, I think Matt 
now is on a different level as a singer. Just years of touring and learning how to do things properly and just building his endurance up as a singer. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic record. Um, we love it. There's so many great songs on there, though. Um, and we've obviously heard the three singles that have come out, but it must have been really hard to choose. I mean, I'm, I'm listening to it now, and I'm thinking, wow, uh, Dead and Gone's great, and, and The Ghost That's Haunting You really stands out for me as well. And uh, also, I think there's a sort of like really uh, in-your-face metal of uh, Breathing the Flames that closes the album. Yeah, all really, really cool songs. What what sort of feedback are you getting? You. Uh, I mean, the, the one thing, I was actually talking to Corey about it, and he had mentioned that someone said, when they first heard Until the World Goes Cold, they weren't totally sure on the song, mm. but when they heard it in the context of the record, it made a lot more sense with the song that follows and the song that came before it. And so I think we're kind of getting that with the record. I mean, you know, I think the people that have never heard Trivium, if they hear the singles, it'll definitely react. We we have that feeling that it will. But if you've kind of been along the ride with us and you have seen the history, it's kind of like when you are presented with something new from a band and you kind of know certain things that they'll do, you know, you got to kind of hear the whole thing to really know what's going to happen. Like, I... For me, like the new Maiden record is amazing, but you have you got to hear the record. You know, it's it's one of those things you have to hear the whole thing. And to me, that's kind of more why I'm into metal than single driven music because I like full records. And you know, we know the importance of having a great single, but also you have to make us a, a CD that start to finish says something. And with this one, you know, we have that vision and. We wrote it, and it's really hard to pick songs to release for singles. I, I, it's frustrating to have an album like start to release a couple of songs, and then you know the rest of the record's there, and people have to wait for it. And so this is kind of a, the in between time. It's tough. Yes. If it was up to me, I'd release the record right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the and the um, the cover art as well is quite interesting. Is that? I mean, it struck me. <laughs> Struck me initially as a, a tribute to sort of Motorhead, really. It's got that Motorhead logo sort of look well, to it. The, the new logo that we have, um, we got it done last year. It's actually done by the guy that's done that and my tattoos. Mm. Um, we wanted to personify the logo instead of just the Trivium Tee, which is still one of our, our main logo. We wanted something to kind of personify us. And since we've used a lot of Japanese folklore mm. in the past and also the title track being directly from uh, pretty much a translation of the Japanese story, Silence in the Snow we wanted something to personify that so we had him draw, draw us up a kind of a, a spin on an Oni skull, Oni mask, kind of an idea and he designed it for us, then we decided we wanted to take pictures for the cover instead of drawing it because we had it drawn out and we felt that a picture would be a little bit more iconic than the drawing so we went with that we had a friend of ours who did all the videos and has done all the artwork for the photos all the stuff we had a few masks made we had bone one we had like black and the white one and we shot it on different covers different backgrounds and the white on white was sort of the one that stuck and mm. kind of now our somewhat newish logo that we plan to use a lot more. That sounds cool. It doesn't have a name. Does it have a name? Uh. Um, I think, well, the actual, the, the only demon that it's based off of, the name is Ibaraki. Yeah. So I don't know if we're going with that. I think Matt's called it that. So I'll, uh, I'll defer to whatever he calls it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, some great singles on the album, as we said. Blind Leading the Blind is a pretty funny uh, video. I think the guy who was... Yeah, uh, that was an unexpected, <laughs> unexpected video. <laughs> yeah, the guy who was uh, playing the bass on there, I think, had the had the best wig of them all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's oh, cool. that, that, that's all real. That's a real band. It is a real band, is it? That's, Fantastic. Um, no, that band is, funny enough, the director, the guy that's done the artwork, um, that's his father-in-law's band, 
and he had them learn the song. <laughs> he sent the song over to them, and they, you know, learned it by ear as best they could. And so when they came there, you know, they were ready to play it. And so they were doing what we would normally do in a video, would play the song. And so we were just kind of the background characters. And yeah. it, was, it went from we were originally not going to have a video for Blind Leading the Blind to having one and then having this crazy concept. And we're like, you know what? We usually kind of side with more serious stuff when it comes to the videos, but just wanted to kind of do something a little bit more shocking and fun. Yeah. And uh, it went that way. It was great because we didn't have to play the video and there was an open bar the whole day. And it was probably <laughs> the most fun we've had in a video in a while. <laughs> That's great. It really works. And I, I think I've been to a few places like that when, I've been, when I've been over in the States. But, uh, it's it's cool. Uh, I've got a, I've got a question from our, our uh, message board. Um, it's a bit of a music one. Someone yeah. spotted you playing a new bass on Silence in the Snow. Mm. What's that all about? You've got a. I think it's a. Oh, uh, a, a well, actually, on the, the album I actually use my uh, my B series Warlock, but at the end of the album, kind of uh, decided I was going to move on to something new. And I was put in touch with a few companies, but the one that really stood out was Warwick. Mm. And they sent me a couple bases and instantly, you know, loved what they sent me, loved the people that were uh, working with me. And so far it's been great. Uh, they sound so awesome, and which is first and foremost the thing I need. But secondly, working with a company that's like very artist friendly, and really easy to approach and talk to. Uh, that's just the best thing you can have, and that's all I've ever wanted with endorsees and endorsers. That's great. That's great. Yeah, you're out on the tour at the moment in the US. Uh, takes you through to the end of October with Tremonti, which is a really good pairing, I think. I uh, saw those guys uh, over in Florida. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, I saw those guys over in Florida in April. Uh, they they put on a great show. So, uh, where's the next Where's the next stop? Are you likely to be able to get over to see us in uh, Australia uh, soon? Yeah, I mean, we don't have like, a set date or time, but it's definitely a big thing for us, definitely on the agenda. So, I would say most likely 2016, because um, that's going to be most of our touring. So, we'll get over hopefully next year and as soon as possible. That's that's great. So is uh, so you. Excuse me, Mark. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. This is your two minute reminder. Thank you. Cool. That's great. Thank you. Um, just a couple of quick questions then to wrap up, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, a couple that we we sort of ask mm -hmm. every, everyone, if you like. Uh, if you could have been a fly on the wall for the creation of any great album, uh, just to see how it how it all happened and how the the musicians interacted, what would it be for you yeah. at the moment? Uh, it would definitely be Master Puppets, my favorite album. Yeah. Um, chance to ask a few people. I we we spoke to Michael Wagner once, who did a test mix for us, and we kind of geeked out on like <laughs> asking about things about the record. So, if anything, I'd definitely be that record. But yeah. you know, there's so many I'd love to see. It's a it's a classic. And uh, a final one, a very yeah. very easy question for you to end with: uh, What is the meaning of life? The meaning of life, um, man, just live your dreams, do what you love, your, follow your passion, you know, I think that's really, is, I guess that's as simple as you can break something that uh, existential down. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Would you mind doing a quick shout out uh, for our podcast, Paolo? Yeah. Uh, we're called The Rock, yeah. the Rock Pit, so just something along. The Rock the, Pit? Yes. All right. All right, let me know when. Uh, anytime now. All right. Hey, this is Paolo from Trivium, and you're listening to me on The Rock Pit. That's so cool. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today, mate. Uh, Thank you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just much crank... I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. No worries. I'm just going to crank that album again now. Take care. Cool, man. Enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you.